Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make a noise detector like this. As you can see, it is responding to my voice. So without further ado, I'm not gonna waste your time and let's get on straight to the video. So the first thing you need to do is create a core. So the core will be a circle in the middle of the screen. So I'm just gonna quickly create one. Let's go with orange. I'd say good size is something like 150 by 150 pixels. It doesn't have to be exact. Mine is five pixels off, but make sure it's a perfect circle. And you can make that by holding shift while making a circle like this. You can see it's perfect. Okay, the next thing you need to do is make a new sprite and let's call it UI. Also make sure that the core is on zero zero because that's very important. So this UI will be the actual rods of the noise detector. So what we're going to do for this is let's just draw a long rectangle, protrude it from the middle. So don't center it like the other things. What you want is that the edge, as you can see here, the edge should be sitting right on the center point. You can see there's the center point and that's a perfect rod. And you can see it's, I think it's a bit too short, so I'll make it a bit longer. And that's good because it should be just protruding out of the circle. So this is a good length. Mine is about 80 pixels, which is a tiny bit more than half of the core, if you might have noticed. So let's get on to the code. So the first thing we need to do is create our clones. So let's make a block called create clones. And we need to decide how many we need. So let's put create clones of amount and add an input of amount. And we want this to run without screen refresh. That's the whole point of the block. So let's put this in and let's create something like 50 clones. Okay, so these clones need to be situated in a circle around the core. So what we need to do is repeat the amount that we want, create clone of myself, turn a certain amount of degrees, and this amount will be out of 360 degrees. So to find out how much we need to turn by by the amount, we just take the 360 degrees divided by the amount of clones. And then finally, we'll change clone ID. So this clone ID will be useful for later so that we can determine which one is which for the sprite only so that each clone has its own ID. And change clone ID by one. And just make sure to put stuff like set clone ID to one here and make sure that we are pointing the right direction to start with. Let's press the green flag. And what you should see is an enormous behemoth that looks like the sun for some reason. And there should be one in the middle, which is the original one and all of the others are clones. So the original one needs to be hidden. So what we need to do is put a show block for the clone generating and then hide right after. Press the green flag and you'll see, now we just have a giant circle thing. I I'm not sure. So these need to go to the back. So instead of actually putting these to the back, I'm gonna go to the core and set stuff to the front. So it should kind of resemble the noise detector already. You can see it looks similar to what I showed you at the beginning. Here's a side-by-side -side reference. Now we need these to move according to my voice. And the way we're gonna record your voice is through loudness. And in my old video, there were a lot of people asking me how to put a song over this. And I'm going to show that in the end of the video, so you can skip there and come back later. So when I start as a clone, we need to, of course, show, but we've already done that. So let's do a forever loop. And the way we're going to make them get longer and shorter is using the set size block, which might be a bit weird, but suit yourself. So we can try something like take the loudness divided by five or so, which will make 0 to 20, which is not so much. Let's take pick random to make that random shakiness movement from 0 minus loudness divided by 5 to loudness divided by 5. Basically, what this does is chooses a random number from minus 20 to 20, depending on my voice. And the louder my voice is, the bigger the range will be. I'm not sure if you understand it, but I think you can figure it out. This isn't very important for you to understand. Let's take the loudness and add this to 
do the full thing. And then finally, we're going to add the final parameter if we need to change anything later. So you can see it's kind of small, so let's just add something else. And whoa, we already have kind of a working noise detector. I think that's a bit too big, let's make it a bit smaller. 70, 80, I think 90 is good for me. And as you can see, as I talk, the noise detector gets bigger and smaller. And they shouldn't disappear when you stop talking. So be silent. And adjust it so that each of the rods is perfectly in the middle. For me, that perfectly works out to 100. I don't know how. And as you can see, this noise detector is working. I think the rods are a bit too thick though. You can see they're glitching over each other. So let's go to the costumes and make them a bit thinner. That's better. And make sure to center it too. And there you go. That's a noise detector. Now, this is kind of a full working noise detector, but there are some things you can add to it to make it cooler and better. Firstly, I'm going to add a background because it looks really boring. And I'm also going to change the color of the core. I personally also think that the rods should not have a background. And there you go. That's a noise detector. I'm also going to remove the outline from the core. And there you go. Okay, so that's a perfect noise detector, but I think it would spice it up a bit more if we added some shaking. So let's make a variable called shake x for all sprites and shake y, also for all sprites, of course. Okay, to add some shake, let's make a custom block so that we can customize things easier. Let's put shake with power and let's put an input of say power and add the label speed and input speed. And that should be perfect. Run without screen refresh. I'm not sure if that'll work because it's kind of an animation. And let's shake with power, say 15 and speed 50,000. I know that might sound like a lot, but shaking is hard to achieve. Okay, so in this define shake, we'll make an if and then put an if in both outputs. Now you'll see there are three decision makers here. And that will be pick random one to two equals one, which basically just makes it a 50% chance. So if you put them in all of them, there is four equal chances. So each one has a 25% chance of being chosen. So for the first one, put set shake X and then put a time block. And let's put stuff like loudness divided by power. So this power will de decide how much the screen can shake by. And yeah, th I think these are good numbers for now. And then let's take the other one, which means it is cos and sine. So let's take cos for the x and sine for the y, because that's how it works. And put a times here. And then we're going to put timer times the power. Oh no, sorry. Timer times the speed. And as you can see, that's going to make a shake. As you can see, there's nothing happening really because they don't move. And let's just real quick make the clones move by the shake. So we'll do set X and set Y to shake X and shake Y. And we'll do the same for the core. So set X and set Y to shake X and shake Y. So that should make both the core and the UI shake left and right. As you can see, it, I'm not sure if it's working yet because we still need to add the others. <laughs> also, it's not working because I need to add forever loop. And I should see it is shaking side to side. That, that that's, looks really unnatural, but let's see. Now we're going to copy paste this and set shake X to the same thing, but we're going to take a minus and put this here and it'll be negative. So that means it can shake backwards as well. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but with Y and we'll just copy paste this for Y. And as you can see, it's shaking. That, that's pretty cool if you ask me. And I'm going to add like stuff like shock waves and maybe particles later in another video. And tell me if you want that in the comments because I honestly think it's pretty cool. Just look at this. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is really all. I think it's pretty cool and I like the color as well. Why does that remind me of coffee? Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And for those of you who wanted to see how to make a song, I'm going to show you now. So the way you do it is you open a new tab and you put in your own song and then that song that you wanted to play, if you wanted to play in the scratch editor, it's pretty much impossible. But the way to do it in a scratch project, you could just tell the user to open a new tab and play the song themselves. 
and if they play out loud, which you probably should not do in class, let's say, then it will activate the noise detector because it's impossible to differentiate between my voice and the sound coming from your speaker. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I hope this video isn't like 11 minutes long. If you're still watching, thank you so much. Only like 20% of viewers get here. And I'll see you guys in the next video.